So did you know that you can run Windows 11 ARM on an Apple Silicon Mac completely for free using a piece of software called VMware Fusion? And unlike competitors like Parallels, which require a yearly subscription, VMware is completely free for personal use. And today I'm going to be showing you VMware Fusion 13.5.1, the latest update. And what makes this special compared to the last tutorial video I did on the same subject is the fact that Windows 11 ARM is much, much easier to install now. There are no scripts involved. You don't have to open up Terminal. There's an automatic installer included into VMware Fusion 13.5.1, which just allows you to download Windows 11 ARM within the installer itself. And VMware Fusion Player has come a long way over the last couple of years, getting a lot of the features that Parallels used to be unique in. For example, we can now run DirectX 11 games through the virtual machine, and we can also run OpenGL 4.3. So this allows us to run some high-end games like the game Control. We can play games like Skyrim on it too. But not only that, we can also run productivity apps. So if you wanted to use the Windows version of, let's say, Office or Excel, you could actually do this here as well. So today I'm going to be doing an updated tutorial for the latest version of VMware Fusion Player 13.5.1 with all of the new install instructions. And we're demonstrating a couple of games and productivity apps and showing you how you can get Windows 11 R working as cheaply as possible on the Mac. So what I'm going to do is to leave a link for the VMware Fusion Mac download page in the description. So we have this VMware Fusion desktop hypervisors for Mac. This is the section that we want. However, if we do go to the VMware website, if this moves in the future, basically you want to go to products and then you want fusion for mac so that's desktop hypervisor fusion for mac here and you'll be taken to the correct page. And basically we're gonna scroll down until we find desktop hypervisors for Mac. We're gonna be using the free version with a personal use license. So this is free to use today. So click here to register to get your key now. And once we've done this, what we're gonna do is to go ahead and log into your account. If you don't have one already, then go ahead and click create an account. And then that's gonna take us to the account creation page. Just enter all of the details, email address, password, name, address, etc. Just fill all of that out and then make sure that you're logged in. I'm be signing into my existing VMware Fusion account. Basically, this is just us signing in. So now that we are signed into our account, now we have our license key. So make sure that we make a copy of this. So just select this, control click, and then press the copy button. And then next we need to download the binary. So this is 13.5.0. Later on, we'll be able to upgrade to 30.5.1. So here we're going to click manually download and then click allow. And then this is going to go into our finder downloads folder. So minimize this. So in finder under downloads, once the file is downloaded, we're going to find this DMD file here when I double click on this to open it. And then we have Fusion Player here. So we need to double click on this to start the installer. So here it's saying that VMware Fusion is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open it? Press open. Here we're going to type in our Mac password, press OK. I'm now it's saying it's initializing. So just let that start. The VMware Fusion terms and conditions have appeared here. We're going to press agree to continue. And then we're going to enter our license key. So we're going to use the license key that we had earlier. Just paste this into this window here. We can find it under license information on your account from earlier. So just go ahead and paste this here and then press continue. So it says here, thank you for using VMware Fusion 13 player, press done. So it's saying here for optimal performance of your keyboard and mouse inside your virtual machine, give VMware Fusion access. So we're going to press OK here. We're going to open up system settings and then we're going to allow VMware Fusion to have full accessibility access. So just toggle that button and then modify settings. We also have this option here to update to VMware Fusion 13.5.1, which is the latest at the time of recording. But we're going to do that after we install Windows. So here we have the installation method wizard open now. What we're going to do is to click get Windows from Microsoft. So this is substantially easier than the previous method required, which we'll need to download a script and run it through terminal. If we press continue here, it's basically going to download and install a Windows 11 ARM virtual machine on the Apple Silicon Mac for us. We're going to select our edition so you can have professional enterprise. I'm just going to stick with professional and then click the download Windows button. Then we're going to make sure we have the correct language, then click the download Windows button. So basically this automates the process of downloading the Windows 11 ARM image from the Microsoft service directly. This is a hell of a lot easier than what it used to be. Just let this continue running. It might take a bit of time. It's a few gigabytes in size. So once the Windows 11 ISO has been created, you're going to see that this has been downloaded here, but we don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is to press the continue button here. We're going to specify the UEFI boot firmware, press continue. Here it's going to ask us to generate a password. You can create one here and verify, or if you auto generate one, it's going to make sure that it saves into the keychain anyway, as long as this button is pressed. So you don't necessarily need to remember this, press continue. Here it's asking us whether we want to create a new disk. So this is basically where the virtual machine storage is located. Here you're going to allow it to create a 64 gigabyte disk, press continue. So now the virtual machine is almost ready to be created. Here you can customize settings to make changes to the virtual machine. For example, we can change where it's located. So now the virtual machine is ready to launch. Now, before you launch this, you might want to 
change a couple of settings. So under the settings menu here, we have processes of memory. So generally speaking, you want to use half of the processor cores for your virtual machine, and you normally want an even number. So because my M1 Max has 10 CPU cores, I'm going to allocate four CPU cores to this virtual machine. And we also want to allocate an amount of memory as well. So I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. I think I can go safely all the way up to 18 gigabytes of RAM, which is basically half. So allocate half. If you have, say, eight gigabytes, then you want to use, let's say, four gigabytes of memory for your virtual machine. Basically, this is where you allocate it to get the maximum performance. This is important as well because graphics memory is going to come under here as well. If we check display, we can see that we have Accelerate 3D graphics here. So it supports DirectX 11 and we have the shared graphics memory allocated here. And basically, that's all we need to do to so close this settings menu here. Now we can go ahead and launch the virtual machine. So click the play button here and then it's going to launch. We're going to allow VMware Fusion to use Bluetooth and when it asks to press a key, press spacebar or any key on your keyboard. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the install process, standard for all Windows 11 installs. So press next here, press install now. This is basically going to install the ISA we downloaded earlier into the virtual disk that we created earlier as well. I'm saying here setup is starting. Uh, so in terms of activating Windows, I'll leave a link in the description for whether you actually need to activate Windows in the first place. At this stage, you don't need to do anything. You can just click I don't have a product key. And here we're going to install Windows 11. So you can choose between home and pro. I'm going to install pro click next and then we're going to accept the licensing agreement press next and here we're going to click custom install and then we're going to install it in that 65 gigabytes of storage press next and now it started the install process this might take a bit of time just wait for that to complete so now windows 11 arm is actually booting up and we're going to go into the setup process and we're going into the setup window for real here we're going to choose our country so click yes we're going to choose this keyboard layout skip the layout of a secondary keyboard it's checking for updates so let's name our device i'm going to call it macbook click next saying here just a moment now it's restarting so now we're going to the window here. So we're going to click on setup for personal use and click next. So at this stage, we can sign in to your Microsoft account. And that's because it's kind of detected that we are online. So if you don't want to actually do this, then what you can do is just make sure that you don't have an internet connection turned on. And then what we're going to do is to use a command in order to bypass this online sign in. So our internet is completely off. I'm going to enter a command using the command prompt. So we need to hold down the function key if using a Mac keyboard, shift and then F10. There's so really shift F10, but function unlocks the F10 key. So function shift F10. Then I want to type in a command OOBE backslash bypass NRO. Press return. Now that's restarting. Then we can repeat the setup process and we'll be able to skip that screen. So we're going to press yes. Yes to the keyboard again. Skip the layout. So it's asking us to connect to the internet. We don't have internet connected. So we're going to press I don't have internet and then continue with limited setup. We're going to enter our name, press next, and then a password which is optional. So we can disable any kind of analytics if you want to, or just leave it on by default, let's accept. And now Windows 11 ARM is basically fully installed. So it's just getting things ready in the background. You can see here, Windows 11 ARM is kind of populating right now, and we're now able to use it fully. So the next thing that we need to do is install the VMware tools drivers. So that's going to help a lot with performance and the ability to change things like resolution on the screen. It's going to be quite important that we have VMware tools. Otherwise, we're going to be limited to 1024 by 768. So I'm going to close this. And when you click this button at the top of the dock, it says virtual machine, install VMware tools. And we're going to click the install button here. And basically what this does is that it mounts a virtual DVD containing all the drivers that we need. So if we go to File Explorer and go to D here, then we have the setup.exe under VMware tools, which we can now run. So double click on setup, press yes. And now it's started installation. So we can close this now and just click next on this wizard, typical, and then install. So now what I'm going to do is to press the finish button here and VMware tools has installed. We need to click yes to restart the entire virtual machine. So just wait for that to finish restarting. So now that the tools have installed, we can right click on the desktop, go to display settings, and now we have more resolution options. So we can select, let's say our recording resolution, 1080p, keep changes, and now that's all working correctly. So now what I'm gonna do is to full screen this. So you can do this by pressing this green button here, and then it's gonna behave as if it's a full window here. So you can come out of this by using the four finger swipe on the trackpad, for example, and you'll switch between Mac and Windows quite easily. If you want to escape this again, you can put your mouse at the top of the screen, click to this gleam, and then it's gonna come out of full screen and you'll be part of your 
desktop window. Here we're going to be using it in full screen. So now we've got Windows installed and basically we can go ahead and install other applications. So for example, we could install Steam. So here I'm going to open up Edge and uh, just go past these windows here and continue without syncing. And uh, we can open up this browser and basically we can download the x86 version of various launchers, for example, Steam. So here I'm going to do a search for Steam and then we're going to download this piece of software. Just press install Steam here. And even though this is the ARM version of Windows 11, we can still run x86 apps using the built-in Windows 11 ARM emulation of x86-64. This basically means that we can run all of our standard applications. So for example, here we're going to download and update Steam. So now that Steam's installed, we're going to go ahead and log in with our username and password, or we can actually scan this using the mobile Steam app. Just go ahead and scan the screen and we're going to be able to sign in. So basically we can go ahead and download virtually any game. Many of them aren't compatible due to easy anti-cheat or a lack of DirectX 12 support, but some games do work. So I'm just going to show you a couple now. Now we have the game Skyrim. So I'm going to press the play button and then launch the game for the first time. So just click yes here. And we'll be launching this through the virtual machine with four cores and half of the RAM of this computer. And we're going to go ahead and see how this runs. So here the launchers come up. I'm going to press OK here. I'm just going to set this to medium quality just to show you that this works. And then we're going to press the play button to launch the game. So as you can see, Skyrim runs pretty well on the Apple Silicon Mac using VMware Fusion and this is not too bad considering that this is a free piece of software and we are after all running the game in DirectX 11 mode and we only have half of the system RAM and half of the CPU cores actually four CPU cores out of 10 in this particular case and it manages to run not too badly so as you can see we've managed to get the game control working as well so this is the game running through DirectX 11 mode this can be played through game porting toolkit on crossover with arguably better performance but it runs here for free using DirectX 11. And virtual machines aren't just for gaming either. You can also do work on them too if you wanted to. So this, for example, is the Windows version of Excel. So a lot of people swear by the Windows version rather than the Mac port. Things like formulas and macros work better on the Windows version. So that's a really good reason why you might want to be using this particular Windows 11 ARM virtual machine. So that is Windows 11 ARM running through VMware Fusion on an Apple Silicon Mac. Now, personally, I think that VMware Fusion Play is pretty good for some tasks, but it doesn't quite compare to something like Parallels. To be fair, Parallels does cost an annual subscription, but if you have the ability to pay for it, then you're actually going to get a better experience. It's also the only official way to actually run Windows 11 ARM on an Apple Silicon Mac. It's actually sanctioned by Microsoft themselves, and so it's a much more polished product. You have better features like coherence mode, you have better compatibility, you have better support, fewer crashes, and things just work a little bit better on Parallels. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link to my tutorial video for Parallels in the description. And also, if you're wondering whether you need to buy a Windows 11 ARM um, license in order to use it on VMware Fusion or something like Parallels, then make sure to check out my video, which is all about this topic. It might not cost as much as you think. Anyway, please let me know what you think about Windows 11 on running through VMware Fusion Player. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.